Good morning. This is the third try for morning prayer this morning, a third time's a charm. And we begin with morning prayer on this Monday, the 22nd of February, and we reach a solemn uh, occasion in the United States where this past weekend, I believe, we reached 500,000 deaths due to COVID-19, uh, which is right sobering. Um, the news media reported that that is approximately the population of Atlanta, the Atlanta area, uh, all died uh, over this past year or so uh, due to the effects of COVID-19. So certainly pray for relief and responsible behavior on our parts. And this, of course, is a worldwide pandemic. Well, let us continue our morning prayer with our opening sentence from Psalm 51, verse 9. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my dis misdeeds. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in His presence to give thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to declare His most worthy praise, to hear His most holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon, upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life uh, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, desires not the death of sinners, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. He has empowered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our present deeds may please him, the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works." Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, 
It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. The Psalms for today are Psalms 108 and then 109. O oh God, O oh God, my heart is fixed, my heart is firmly fixed. I will sing and give praise with the best that I have. Awake, my soul, awake, lute and harp. I myself will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks unto you, O Lord, among the peoples, and I will sing praises unto you among the nations. For the greatness of your mercy reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Exalt yourself, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save me from your right hand, by your right hand and answer me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice and divide Shechem and parcel out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim also is the helmet of my head, Judah is my scepter, Moab is my washpot, over Edom will I cast my shoe, over Philistia will I triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city, and who will bring me into Edom? Have you not forsaken us, O God? And will you not, O God, go forth with our host? O help us against the enemy, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do great acts, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Psalm 109 Hold not your tongue, O God, of my praise, for the mouth of the ungodly, the mouth of the deceitful, is opened upon me. They have spoken against me with false tongues. They encompassed me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for the love that I had for them, they have become my adversaries, but I give myself to prayer. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hated for hatred for my love. Set an ungodly man to be ruler over him and let an accuser stand in his right hand. When judgment is given, let him be condemned, and let sentence be passed on him for guilt. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be vagabonds and beg their bread. Let them be driven out, even from desolate places. Let the creditor consume all that he has, and let strangers take his labor for spoil. Let them be no one to pity him, nor to have compassion upon his fatherless children. Let his posterity be destroyed, and in the next generation let his name be blotted out. Let the wickedness of his fathers be held in remembrance in the sight of the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be always before the Lord, that he may root out the memorial of them from the earth. Because he was not minded to do good, but persecuted to death the poor and needy and those who were brokenhearted. His delight was in cursing. He let curses come upon him. He loved not blessing, therefore let it be far from him. He clothed himself with cursing as with a garment. So let it soak into his body like water, and like oil into his bones. Let it be to him as a cloak that he has on and as the belt that he always wears. Let this be the recompense from the Lord to my enemies and to those who speak evil against my soul. But deal with me, O Lord God, according to your name, for sweet is your mercy. O deliver me, for I am helpless and poor, and my heart is wounded within me. I disappear like the shadow that lengthens, and I am shaken off like a grasshopper. My knees are weak through fasting. My flesh is grown lean for want of nourishment. I have become a reproach to them. When they look on me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Save me according to your mercy. And they shall know that this is your hand, and that you, O Lord, have done it. Though they curse, yet you bless. Let them be confounded who rise up against me. 
but let your servant rejoice. Let my adversaries be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own disgrace as with a cloak. As for me, I will give great thanks unto the Lord with my mouth, and praise him among the multitude. For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor, to save their souls from their unrighteous judges. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I must say, Psalm 109 is a bit tough, is it not? Uh, it, uh, it challenges on so many levels um, because to appreciate it, I think we need to put it in the context of extreme suffering and persecution of people who are innocent, or at least view themselves as innocent. And they see people cursing God and doing unrighteous, horrible acts, and they pray to God to inflict upon them that which they have inflicted uh, upon others. But it is so hard to read uh, because there appears to be no grace in that. And the grace, if it's going to be found in it, is only going to be found in God, who actually does hold back the punishment that we all deserve, who sent his Son to bear the punishment that we all deserve upon himself, so that those who look to him and turn to him as their Lord and Savior shall be freed of the curse that the person, the psalmist in 109, placed upon his enemies. And if we think about it, none of us are totally innocent. I was listening to an interview with a gentleman yesterday, and his thoughts were that generations to come will judge us internationally, will judge the people of today, the 21st century, as being callous uh, toward the poor and to those who are being persecuted and those who are seeking a better life, yet have the doors closed to them without really considering uh, what's going on in their lives. It's, it's a call, if you will, to self-examination, which of course fits the Lytton season perfectly. Well, let's continue now with our first lesson, which is taken today from, Ennis, uh, from Exodus chapter 2. Uh, yesterday, of course, being Sunday, uh, we did not read Exodus 1, but I invite you to do so. Exodus chapter 2. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could no longer, when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And, her, and his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. And while her young women walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant women, and she took it. And she opened it and saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. And she took pity on him and said, Ah, this is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the child went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. One day, when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, Why do you strike your companion? He answered, 
Who made you a prince and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. When they came home to their father Reuel, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Then where is he? Have you left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah. And she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. During those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God, and God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. And getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. When the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? 
Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? Pardon me. Can the wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into wine skins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, the O God, ruler of the universe. Let's try that again. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A couple of things I'd like to think about uh, and discuss this morning, but first let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our hearts with your presence. Help us to cast off a desire for revenge against those who harm us or wish us harm. And help us to follow the teachings of our Savior and our Lord Jesus, who told us to pray for even our enemies, to offer more than our cloak when our garments are demanded from us, to turn the other cheek. And this is not in a passive um, way that doesn't recognize dignity, but actually is a dignified way of, of holding up and saying, yet you demand, but I give. And so, Lord, Help us to model our behavior after yours. A Lord that a God that is full of compassion and mercy, always willing to come to the sinner. And when the sinner turns and repents, to embrace her or him with your loving mercy and to clothe us with the righteousness of your Son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, your anointed one, the second person of the Trinity. Amen. So, in today's reading from 2 Exodus, you may recall, 1 Exodus would have revealed the death sentence uh, that was placed uh, on the Hebrew children. Every male child was to be killed. And so Moses, Miriam, uh, his mother, uh, instead of following, uh, allowing that or wanting that to happen to her son, nobody wants it to happen to their child, but she did something that we call exposure. She placed the child in a basket. She protected the basket, but she set it afloat, basically leaving the child into the true hands and mercy of God. It's, it's not something we would particularly recommend, but again, who are we to sit back in the 21st century and judge the situation that was very desperate um, for people who were in slavery and basically under a death sentence? And so what happens and what we get in chapter 2 is the birth of Moses and Miriam acting and her, excuse me, um, Miriam is the sister, uh, Moses' mother acting and sending Miriam, uh, her, his sister, to watch after him in the bulrushes. And of course, he's retrieved um, by Pharaoh's daughter, um, given back to his mother to be nursed and then raised for a season and then given to Pharaoh who adopts him and basically brings him in uh, to the family of Pharaoh. And, and of course, the story goes on. We've read it. I don't need to go into it. What I want to really point out, though, is God hears. God hears the moaning and the crying of his people. God hears 
and God remembers his covenant. And I want to hold on to that for us in the 21st century to recall that God heard back then and God has continued to act in his story for the salvation of the world, bringing his son Jesus into this world. But I want you to see that this story continues and to this day here on the 22nd of February, 2021, God hears and God remembers and his promise of mercy and redemption remain true. And then when we look at our gospel reading today, I want to just focus on the fact that Jesus, the God incarnate, our God incarnate, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus heals based not on the faith of the person who's who paralytic, but on the faith of those who bring him. We mentioned this yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, uh, that uh, the faith of those, uh, in that case, it was the centurion, remember? Pray, uh, coming to Jesus, in an essence, praying uh, for healing for his servant. Servants know where to be found. The servant is sick. And Jesus says, your faith has made him well. Well, here, Jesus heals the paralytic based on the requested faith of his friends. And Jesus calls. He calls Matthew. Matthew, part of the ones who conspire with the enemy, a traitor to his own people, acting as a tax collector, collecting taxes on behalf of the Romans and on behalf of the governing authorities who care nothing about the average common person of the day. And so they distrust him. They dislike tax collectors. They lump them together as uh, tax collectors and sinners. And the, uh, the Pharisees are appalled that Jesus is spending time with tax collector as uh, tax collectors and sinners. And yet Jesus says what? I've been called to, to save not the righteous, but the sick. And then when we realize all of us are sick from sin, all of us are poisoned by sin, then there are no righteous ones except the righteous that God gives and the people who follow that gift through the Holy Spirit. But we need to be in humble position to receive God's grace, mercy, and the righteousness of Christ upon us. And then the wonderful story about uh, the new wineskins, where uh, Jesus is teaching something very practical. Uh, wine skins are made uh, from uh, sheep or some other uh, leather type material of the day, and the wine continues to ferment and therefore expand. And if you have new wine skins, the wine skins are capable of, capable of handling that expansion. But if you put new wine into wine skins that have already expanded beyond up to their ability, then the pressure from the new wine's fermentation will cause the old wine skins to burst. And then both the fresh wine and the wine skins, the bottle, as the King James Version referred to it, would be broken and both would be lost. And Jesus is sort of challenging, and I think this is appropriate for us again in the 21st century, to reflect not only does God hear and God remember that Jesus heals, Jesus calls, but to remember that the message of God's works of salvation is unchanging. God is unchanging. But the vehicle for sharing that message needs to adapt to the culture of the day. Now, I want to be very clear. The message doesn't change. Salvation and reconciliation to God is offered through Christ and Christ alone. That message never changes. But the vehicle, the way of doing worship, if you will, the way of sharing our faith, those, of course, have to adapt and change. And so, as uh, I mentioned in the sermon yesterday, don't let anything <laughs> separate you or attempt to separate you or draw you away from your personal relationship with Jesus. Remember, I used the, 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 the story from uh, the Indiana Jones movie. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have to give me your hand 
give our hand and our hearts to Jesus, to trust fully in him, to put literally both of our hands, our lives, into his hands, to trust him. And in order to do that, we have to let it go. What is the it? We need to let go of anything, religious, secular, anything that would attempt to draw us away from our relationship and our putting our faith, both hands, into the hands of Christ. We've got to let that go. And I think that's part of the new wineskins teaching is the message of God, his mercy, salvation through Christ and Christ alone is unchanging. His commandments, his instructions for a godly and righteous like life, modeling our lives on Christ, that doesn't change. But what does change, what needs to adapt always, is the gospel to the circumstances. Now, again, never change the gospel, but the vehicle that brings the gospel to us, that is subject to change and modification so that people in the 21st century can hear the same message today. That's why we're using the internet right now. If we were stuck in a rut and said, well, Jesus never used the internet, why the church historically never used the internet, then we would be, in essence, putting ourselves and focusing on an it uh, that prohibits us from living out the message of Christ and sharing it. Well, let's continue now with the Apostles' Creed. That again, that unchanging aspect of who we are in Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And, as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, who divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. 
So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. That last prayer for mission reminds me of the scene again from Indiana Jones, uh, stretching out the arms of love, reaching and saving embrace. Um, give me your hand. Let it go. Give me your hand. At this time, I invite you to offer your prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings as the Holy Spirit places upon your mind and your heart. Again, uh, we've reached that somber milestone of 500,000 deaths due to COVID-19 just in the United States. Of course, again, I remind us it is a worldwide pandemic. So please pray for God to have mercy on us, to relieve us from this plague, to help us do that which is necessary. And part of our part in prayer, of course, is to participate in that which we ask for so that our behavior would conform with that which is God providing us through vaccinations, through basically common sense also on how to eradicate uh, this um, terrible uh, disease. Also, we remember today quite a few birthdays, and I'm sure I'm going to miss some, so I apologize, but right off of the internet this morning, shot out uh, birthdays of folks who are, are close to us, and of course, like I said, I, I'm sure I'll miss some, and I apologize, but Susan and Marge, Bill and Kaylee, and George. And also today, we commemorate, we remember, uh, Rachel and Blake's first wedding anniversary, uh, which we held uh, last year at Holy Cross and wish them well. And Kay, of course, who often worships with her, um, Rachel's mama. And so we uh, give thanks for that wedding and continue to ask blessings upon this Christian family. Um, other prayers, intercessions, as the Holy Spirit leads and places on your heart. Let us pray. Pray for the people of Myanmar, for restoration of democracy there, for their safety. Pray for Christians who are persecuted all around the world for their faith. Pray for the suffering, O oh Lord, all around the world, remembering those in Texas and elsewhere, but also suffering people whose we take, we have such blessed lives here. We live in such a wonderful bubble of protection. And there are people who, villages and their livelihood is threatened. And we just lift up the suffering in this world, the poor, the widow, the suffering, those who mourn, those who cry out for justice. Protect our hearts from becoming hardened toward the needs of others. Amen. And now our general thanksgiving. Please join me. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, 
and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our poem today is quite short. It's entitled First Fig, which made me think of Jesus talking about, uh, you know, how when we go outside and we see the, the dead branches beginning, beginning to bear new life, spring beginning to appear, that's one of the signs of God and how he sort of challenges how, how is it you can see and recognize the signs here of nature but fail to see the fulfillment of the prophecies about God and ultimately himself, the Messiah. Well, here the, the first fig uh, reminded me of that in the title. It's written by a, a, a woman by the name of Edna St. Edna St. Vincent Millay. She was born on this day in 1892 and died on the 19th of October in 1950. And she's rather famous, although I'd never heard of her before, in this sense. She was the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize in poetry. And so Edna St. Vincent Millay wrote this little short poem about, she called it the first fig. And in some sense, I think we can relate to it because she starts, she talks about the candle burning at both ends. And she also relates to herself as the, uh, as a pioneer woman of poetry in, in the United States. Um, and she writes about, and she was also a playwright, and she says uh, about uh, when she publishes or when a writer publishes something, she says, if it's good, if it's a good book, nothing can hurt him. And if it's a bad book, nothing can help him. And so here, um, if you ever feel like the first fig here, um, the challenges of life, remember, truly, turn to Jesus. Turn to God. His mercy is everlasting. Don't copy the psalmist of Psalm 109, uh, who uh, wants vengeance, and vengeance, destruction, and misery upon his oppressors, which I can appreciate. I can understand that. But let us be more like the psalmist of 108, uh, more like Jesus in praying even for those who would persecute and hurt us. First Fig by Edna St. Vincent Millay. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night, but ah, my foes, and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Let our faith give a lovely light for the season that we have here on this earth to everyone. Remember, let it go and put both of your hands trusting in Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. And as his hands reach out to save us, let us extend our hands once we're fully in his grasp or in his grip to help pull others alongside as brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you, my friends, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.